Hi everyone, welcome to another video for Electron Retrax. Have you ever wondered which controller will suit your needs the best? Whether you need the basic version, top of the line or something in between? Well stay tuned because that's exactly what we're going to show you. Roll the intro. Okay, so let's start with the most basic of basic. And we already did a video about this, and it isn't technically a controller, but it's one you need to know about. The new manual controller only just came out, but has already become a must. Why? Because it allows you to retract or extend your retracts without connecting everything up to the plane and the radio. Why? Because in the last video, if you haven't seen it, check it out, it's a must. We explained why you should never connect a battery directly to your retracts. It can burn them, it can cause all kinds of problems, and with this you can do it safely without needing to connect up your transmitter and your model. So, manual controller. Does what it says on the tin. Just controls it manually, two buttons. Next up, we have the RB45. Now, this controller is Electron's most basic controller, but that doesn't mean that it can't do the job. Now, this will work with all of Electron's different retract systems, ER30, ER40, and ER50. It can operate your three retracts. It offers proportional braking and you can even connect your steering, steering servo through it to make sure that it both centers before retracting and then is locked in position until you extend the retracts again. Now what kind of model would this be ideal for? This is ideal for any kind of model that doesn't have gear doors. So that can be anything from trainer aircraft to a number of the sport jets out there. Basically, it'll work with anything, but just bear in mind that it doesn't have a gear door sequencer incorporated into it. It is, however, the cheapest of the three versions, and for many situations, it will work just as well as the others. Next up, we have the RS200. Now, the RS200 does exactly the same as the RB45, plus a couple of extra added features. Specifically, it offers three gear doors, which can be sequenced in a number of different ways to suit your model. So, whether you want the gear doors to stay open, with the gear out of course, or whether you want them to retract again after the gear doors have come out as say the Viper jet does. Or an array of combinations however you desire. It also offers ABS in the braking. So as well as the proportional braking offered by the RB45, the RS200 offers ABS which can be programmed uh, so that the braking happens by pulsing, by pul pulsating the brakes to try and make sure that when braking you're going to continue in a straight line because it is not actually locking up the discs or the wheels themselves. Now both the RB45 and the RS200 are programmed via the LED buttons uh, that the actual box itself has. Now, there are just five steps to setting them up and really couldn't be simpler. Just follow the instructions, which basically are press the button, set the uh, gear switch, press it again, set the gear switch to the other way, etc, etc. So very simple. We'll leave a link to the instructions below as well. With the RS200, the programming works in the exact same way. However, if you want to access those extra features that the RB45 doesn't have, in other words, those gear doors or 
the ABS pulsating brakes, that needs to be done via the uh, programmer, the screen. Now, through the screen, you can also program all of the other features as well. So basically, with the RB45, you have to use the button, whereas with the RS200, you have the choice to use the button for the basic setup or the screen for both the basic and the slightly more advanced setup as well. It's worth pointing out that you don't actually need to have the original Electron Retrax screen. You can use the screen from any GSU that is produced by Shikoi. So if you have a turbine with Shikoi Electronics, use the same screen, works perfectly. At the end of the day, it's the same stuff inside. And finally, we have the big boy. We have the top of the line GS200. Now when we say top of the line this thing really does it all. Now as you can see it is a little bit larger than the others uh, but it's still quite small compared to many of the components that we have such as the batteries or the power boxes or so on. So all of these can be installed pretty much anywhere in the model uh, taking very little space and adding literally no weight at all. Now, the GS200. The GS200 offers everything that the other two have, but so much more. The GS200, as you can obviously see, has its own screen, which is a touch screen. That means you don't need to use buttons and you don't need to use external programmers. Everything is done via the screen itself. It also incorporates a gyro inside which means that once programmed you can slam on the brakes and the gyro is actually going to detect if the model starts going one way or the other and will reduce one of the brakes and apply slightly more of the other in such a way that it will assure that you're actually braking in a straight line. So no more of that horrible skidding when you slam on the brakes. It has even more features thanks to the gyro, which are that even in the actual steering itself, you can also program in a small amount of braking, which means that your steering is even more effective. Now, this is brilliant for warbirds, which we all know often struggle on takeoff and even landing sometime, uh, simply because the tail wheel gets up in the air very quickly and then planes start squiggling all over the place. Now with a small amount of brake on each wheel you still have steering even though that tail wheel isn't on the ground and the rudder doesn't have an airflow yet. It also has a whole load of gear doors. It has eight gear doors available to you. Each can be individually programmed and sequenced however you wish. Now as you can imagine eight gear doors gives you quite a lot of options uh, for however you want that sequence to go. Now it's also worth pointing out that all of these work with servos, electronic actuators and uh, electro valves. So whichever you want to use they'll all work perfectly uh, for that. Obviously the GS200 has up to eight of those, the RS200 has three of those, and sadly, the RB45 doesn't have any. So bear that in mind when you're choosing yours. Does your model have gear doors? And if so, how many? Now, it also has a micro SD slot, which allows you to copy and back up all of your programming. It also means that if you have a friend who's already done it, done it in their model, you can be a little bit cheeky and just say, hey, let me just copy it, paste it, and then you have all the settings. It's also used for updating the software. It's worth pointing out as well that given that it has a gyro inside, it must be installed flat and in a particular direction. If not, the gyro won't work correctly. Again, full instructions in the link below, and we'll also be doing 
an individual video manual for each one of the three controllers very shortly. So bear with us for that. When would you want to use the GS200? Well, obviously all of these work backwards. So the higher uh, controllers will work perfectly in models that don't have all those extra functions. So it depends a little bit on you as to what your intention is for both the current model and future models. This will of course work anywhere. This has three gear doors and this one doesn't have any. Does your current model have gear doors? Is it going to be a little bit awkward for taking off or landing? Does your strip, because of the material it's made out of, have a habit of making planes twist and squiggle on landing, on braking? This is going to be your best bet. Equally, if even on this particular model uh, you don't have gear doors, but you're looking at getting into a scale jet or a model with a little bit more complexity in the not too distant future, well, perhaps look at this one and then you can use that for your next model as well. If you simply have a couple of gear doors, the uh, RS200 will work perfectly for you. Or if you just want to get up and fly, no gear doors, no hassle, no problems, the RB45 will serve you perfectly. And that about sums it up. We hope you've enjoyed the video. We hope it helps you choose which one of the three controllers is going to suit you the best. Remember, manual controller for operating it without a radio. No batteries. And let us know what you think about the video. Drop us a line if you have any questions or queries. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.